Hello, hi. My name is Mr. Abdul Hadi Ismail. I'm one of the cardiac surgery registrar here at Southampton General Hospital. I would like to welcome you all to our latest chapter in Southampton Reviews in Cardiac Surgery. Before we start, I would like to thank Mr. Sonil Ori, our clinical lead and adult cardiac surgery consultant, as well as Mr. Theodore Veliseris, our adult cardiac surgery consultant, as well as Mr. Ayman Alasar our senior registrar here at University Hospital Southampton NHS Foundation Trust. In this chapter, we will be discussing the basic fundamental concepts as well as techniques of myocardial protection. This is a brief outline of what we will be tackling in this chapter. We will start with myocardial perfusion, then fundamental concepts, then eventually will lead to the uh, various techniques of delivering uh, myocardial protection. To start with the first discipline, uh, myocardial perfusion. In this uh, discipline, we will be um, um, looking at the various factors which contribute to myocardial oxygen supply. So myocardial oxygen supply is governed by two main arms. That is one, how much blood is reaching the heart as well as how much oxygen is available on that blood. This is roughly speaking. In more technical terms, MO2, that is myocardial oxygen content, is equal to arterial oxygen content times um, a myocardial perfusion or coronary blood flow. Coronary blood flow, on the other hand, is governed by three main factors. One is the coronary perfusion pressure, which is uh, calculated as diastolic pressure minus LV in diastolic pressure. Um, uh, hence, all factors which increase the interventricular pressure or increase in diastolic pressure, like distension, fibrillation, will obviously compromise coronary perfusion pressure. The other two factors are interrelated together by what we call pulsus law. Pulsus law states that uh, relates the diameter to resistance um, um, of the coronary vessels. So um, here I would like to emphasize on the fact that whenever you are met with uh, an equation, it is very crucial, very important to be aware. You need to understand what's the merit of the equation. It is nice to learn it by heart, know the specifics of the equation. However, more important is to understand and focus on what's the merit or the take-home message of this equation. In this particular instance, Possel's law will give us a very important information that is 50% reduction in coronary diameter will lead to 16 times more increase of resistance. Hence, the number 50% has a very important significance in um, um, uh, coronary artery um, guidelines as we will later see on the guidelines um, in later chapters as we will be discussing for. So remember 50% reduction in coronary diameter leads to 16 more, uh, times more um, increase of resistance. Um, uh, also resistance is governed, the coronary resistance is governed by uh, local and systemic vasodilator effects. Why is this important in, in this context? Because we are on bypass which uh, profoundly elicits all the local and systemic vasodilator uh, substance. Finally, the other arm of the equation, which is arterial oxygen content. Arterial oxygen content, we are faced with another equation that is CaO2 content arterial oxygen equals um, how much oxygen on hemoglobin plus how much dissolved oxygen. Again, the merit of the equation is, remember, factors which govern this include partial pressure, PaO2, SAO2, which is oxygen saturation and hemoglobin content. Whenever you're faced with a poor oxygenation patient, you need to look at all these three factors. The equation itself is CaO2 equals um, uh, 1.34, which is Hafner's constant, times Hb plus 0 0.031 times PaO2. This gives us uh, the arterial oxygen content. What happens to myocardial perfusion on bypass? Unfortunately, it is a suboptimal state of perfusing the heart. Physiological state is a better state. Then why do we settle for bypass? Simply because the physiological or the baseline state is diseased. You have coronary artery disease, you need to fix it. You have a valvular disease, you need to fix it. The way to fix it is to use bypass. However, bear in mind, bypass is a suboptimal state of perfusing the heart. Um, why is that? Simply because all factors of myocardial perfusion are affected with bypass. And this reflects a very important fact that we are all aware of, that uh, still, bypass time is a very important predictor of myocardial um, morbidity post cardiac surgery. So, the least, the lower, the less time of myocardial um, uh, cardiopulmonary bypass leads to better outcomes and less morbidity of um, uh, post surgery. Why is that? Why is bypass a suboptimal state? Perfusion pressures. First of all, perfusion pressures during bypass are uh, slightly less than the na natural physiological perfusion pressures. Why do we do, th do that? Simply because one, 
um, uh, bypass elicits vasodilator effects and in order to maintain the same perfusion pressure you will require higher doses of vasopressors and uh, on bypass which has other deleterious effects so we don't like to do that second point is we are using plastic tube i don't mean by plastic the material i mean the uh, character plastic in contrast to elastic recoil physiological vessels so the plastic tubes in order to maintain the same perfusion pressure you will have to overflow for those of you who spend some time in the perfusion department you will notice that in order to maintain the same perfusion pressure you will have to overflow third last but not least in order to maintain the same perfusion pressures as the physiological level you will have to um, uh, run higher pressure on the pump itself so you will raise the oxygenator pressure you will raise the pumps pressures and that's always pre um, 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 uh, that always um, uh, causes um, or um, predisposes to accidents so we don't do that um, so eventually we settle that we will perfuse at a lower perfusion pressure. Flow, remember, is different than perfect pressure. We are talking about perfusion pressures rather than the flow. Um, uh, then we are the coronary diameter will obviously be uh, um, uh, reduced simply because of the heart being at a state of more or less emptiness, which creates a negative suction, negative intraventricular pressure, hence this reduces the uh, um, coronary diameter. Finally, coronary resistance also increases on bypass due to the myocardial edema as well as um, uh, SIRS effect, um, as well as the tension force we just explained now. Last, I would like to emphasize on certain situations um, causes the hearts being more vulnerable than usual, including hypertrophied heart, fibrillating hearts, including immediately post ischemic attacks, uh, as well as severely diseased coronary disease. In those particular situations, the heart is very vulnerable, and you will need to be very conscious about myocardial perfusion as well as myocardial protection. In this last class slide, we'll be discussing an MCQ question. I'll leave you with that just to test uh, your knowledge in this discipline. Thank you very much.